Hey data fans, Reid here. Today I'm going to discuss an important reason you may not want to use the today function when writing certain DAX time intelligence measures. The issue is that this will update each time you open the Power BI desktop file in your application, even when it's used in a DAX calculated column or table. So I'll discuss some reasons why we might not want to do this and how to fix this if we don't. So let's go ahead and hop into Power BI and get started. So to start this conversation, what I have in front of us here is a card that's actually showing you both the date and the time, and it's using the now function. The only difference between the now function and the today function is that now returns both date and time versus the today function, which simply just shows you the date. And I'm showing you this here because what this is, is this is a DAX calculated table in the model. And what will happen when I close and reopen this file is that this number will change. So it's going to represent to you what will happen where both the number and as different days happen as well, the date will change. And what this will show you is that both the time when I reopen it and also if I reopen this tomorrow, the date would also change each time I open this, even though this is a DAX calculated table. So let me close and reopen the file. And there you go. You see that the time is now updated on that card. Now, the reason this can potentially be an issue is if you created certain time intelligence functions in your model for either filters or year to date functions or anything else that's filtering your data down. And as an example, you might have a file system where you are archiving these for certain versions where you have periods where you save the file for November of 2020 or October of 2020, and you want version history so you can look back at historical data, especially if that data changes for the company, then the issue now is if you use the today or now function and you open this file up, let's say in six months or a year, all of those things will basically be anchored to the point that you opened it and not necessarily the period in time when that file was saved. So for archival purposes, especially when you want to save data in an import data model, there's actually a downside to using these certain functions because it will continuously update as you update in Power BI Desktop. Now it won't do this in the service. What it does is it updates these queries for DAX only in Power BI Desktop. So in the service, each time you open the report, all of those things are going to be anchored to the last time the model was refreshed for that specific file. But in desktop, again, if you are using this for any kind of retrieval purposes for older versions of the data model and the basically historical data, then this can potentially cause some issues. So in this video, we're going to walk through an alternative way to fix this and make sure that these numbers and specifically the date ranges that we have don't update each time you open the report. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the different DAX measures that I have over here. Let me expand this out. There we go. Now this one here is actually using the today function. And as I already have shown you, that's going to have an issue because right now the trailing two year period is going to continuously update. Every time I open this file, it's going to update to starting from today rather than in some example, being able to want to anchor that to a more fixed period where it will be anchored to whenever that file was last refreshed. If you ever have any kind of archived file versions. So we don't want to use the today function. So let's check this other measure that's below it, which is the power query calendar. And one thing that we can actually use is power query and potentially create a day offset column. And what that will do is that just calculates when that table was refreshed, whatever the day offset is. So day offset of zero just means that it's basically anchoring this to today, quote unquote, when this file was refreshed. So now we have a more fixed period to compare by in dates and period, which will make sure that this rolling window does not update each time you open the file. So that's one solution. And as you can see over here, that can be the difference between having a calendar table and having a power query calendar table. Since DAX will always update each time you open the file, even if it is in columns or tables versus power query, which will only refresh whenever you actually hit that refresh button on the home ribbon or specifically on any of these exact tables by using the refresh data as well. And then a third option we have over here, and this one is personally my favorite to use. What we have up here is a variable that's just returning the max date from a single column and row table called refresh date time. And I often put these in models where I basically just grab a single column and row table, stick it into the model that's disconnected, and that is the refresh date and time to then be used to put a timestamp on the page somewhere that says the last time this was refreshed so consumers and clients can see how fresh their data is once this is published to the service and refreshing on some type of scheduled refresh cycle. And you can see that table over here. If I just come to the data tab, show you the refresh date time table, it is just a single column and single row table that is in here that's just grabbing that. And I can quickly show you what that looks like in the query editor. If I go to home and open this up, here we go. 
All it is is a couple of steps, but the source step really just starts with date time dot local now, which retrieves the current date time and it converts it to a table. I rename the columns, change the data type. It's a very simple query that's just kept into here and it will always match whenever the refresh date is of this model. Go ahead and close back out of here. So you've seen a couple of options so far that we've done. We can go ahead and just use an entirely Power Query based calendar but there is a more robust Power Query calendar table that I have on my website. And if you're interested in downloading that, that's located on my files page and that can be purchased and bought. And it has quite a few different columns and calculations, including offsets at both the calendar and fiscal years and a lot of other advanced things that allow you to really quickly just lift and shift that from the file template right into any modeling that you might have. So if you are curious about the, getting the calendar table, go ahead and check that link down in the description. You can also just simply use a disconnected date timetable to grab, again, that today function that is still refreshing only when it is refreshing as a scheduled refresh in the service online. And there's one last hybrid approach you can do too. If you still wanted to use a DAX calendar table, what you can create is a day offset column that is using Power Query tables instead of DAX. The day offset in here is giving you that day offset, whether or not it's the current, prior, or future days, but that relies on the today function. You can use a hybrid approach where you can create a similar one, but what this does is this is using a date difference based off of that refresh date and time. So even though this column will actually refresh and fetch new data for it, because it's anchored to that refresh table that is built in Power Query, that table didn't refresh, therefore this number will not change. So it still will maintain the correct time period as you continuously open this file in the future. So hopefully you found this useful, but I gave you a few different business scenarios of why you may or may not want to use the today function and a couple of paths to be able to configure this depending on what your needs might be, whether or not it is a DAX table with a little bit of Power Query used in there as some of the data that goes into it from a disconnected table, or you can just go specifically for the disconnected refresh date timetable, or you can also go for a Power Query calendar table. But you've seen each scenario and three different ways to apply this. So uh, a lot of different options are now available for you. Thank you so much for watching. And please don't forget to like, comment, or share this video. If this is your first time to my channel, or you want to see more of these awesome videos, smash that subscribe and notification button. And last but not least, you can download the file for today's video from my blog files page using the link down below.